welcome to Was It Something I Said, the panel show all about quotations and the quoted people who quotated them. The quotatorizers, as I believe they're technically called, <laughs> or is it quotatinators? <laughs> Whoever they are and whatever the hell they're called, that's who we'll be asking questions about. On Mickey Flanagan's team, an Englishman, an Irishman and a Scotsman are just three ways not to describe Welsh comedian Rod Gilbert. <laughs> And with Richard Iowardi tonight, an Englishman, an Irishman and a Scotsman are equally inappropriate ways of describing comedian Josie Long. <laughs> and here to read our quotations is a broadcaster famous for his dodgy fashion sense on children's TV, who once said, Looking back at my choice of shirts and jumpers, I really do cringe. But it was the 70s. Thank heavens it's only the fashion police he has to worry about. Please welcome legendary newsreader John Craven. <laughs> um, Josie, do you have a favourite quotation? Yeah, I do. There's this quote by Albert Camus, the miserable French writer, philosopher, pipe smoker, uh, goalkeeper. Goalkeeper. That yeah, was the one I was looking yeah. for. <laughs> and then um, he says that. In the depths of winter, I realised that within myself there was an invincible summer. And it's so awesome, but it's also meaningless because that's not true. <laughs> it was still winter till the middle of June. But it's beautiful, isn't it? How many people here feel they've got an invincible summer lying within them? <laughs> I worry sometimes I've got a drizzly autumn lying. <laughs> uh, I'm just like a Russian doll of winter. <laughs> just open me up and there's more and more ice, coldness and despair. <laughs> so, and then a tiny baby one right in the middle. Yeah, who's furious. <laughs> no one even knows I'm here and it's cold. <laughs> Our opening round is called threesomes. Many good things come in threes. French hens, billy goat scruff, blind mice. All rather nice starters in a Heston Blumenthal restaurant. <laughs> also coming in threes, three famous people who may have said a particular quotation. All our panellists have to do is decide which of the three said it. Now, as a modern, thrusting, go-getting panel show, you can play along at home by following at something I said on Twitter to unlock extra clips. The theme of this week's threesome is childhood. And can we have the first quotation, please, John? My earliest memory is of our nanny trying to drown me in the bus. I promise you, Nursey Rogers was holding me under. In, in a moment, I'll give you three famous faces to choose from. But before that, what, what do you make of the quote? I think this statement sort of rules out most of the working class. Do you? Yeah, because we don't tend no, to have nannies be. that bath us. They tend to go, hack off, I've had mine, you go and do it. You know? <laughs> I can't see it being Ray Winston, put it that way. Or maybe it's an upper class person. The upper class is very weird about this sort of thing. It's nice that uh, whoever it is has uh, still calls them Nursey Rogers with some affection all these years later after the attempted assassination. <laughs> One of my earliest memories is almost drowning in a, in a, like a bowl of ginger beer. Really? Yeah. Why my was mother... there a bowl of ginger beer? My mother was making ginger beer in like a big bowl on the thing. I stood up on a stool and fell in it. It was scalding. <laughs> I, fe I fell in it and I can remember sort of floating about in it like that. And, <laughs> out, and my mother was putting something on the washing line out of the garden. Really? No, yes. so it was scalding. It was scalding. She was boiling ginger beer. Did you boil, like, the ginger root or something? I don't know. I didn't ask a fucking recipe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to narrow down your options okay. now for who I'm said this. Was so. it Claire Balding off Channel 4 Racing, Nick Hewer off The Apprentice, or Prince Harry off his face? <laughs> <laughs> if it was Prince Harry, we'd have read about it, wouldn't we, surely? The, an assassination attempt on the... If it was the royal family, they would have had her murdered. <laughs> <laughs> And the end of the quote would be, she's dead now, of course. Special forces. <laughs> <laughs> That's the explanation. What's your next question? My, uh, my grandmother's no longer with us now, of course. Special forces. <laughs> <laughs> How can your first memory be of being drowned? You see, I think it's conceptually quite hard for your first memory to incorporate the idea of death. <laughs> Shit, they're trying to kill me. Oh, I don't know what life is. Am I alive? I'm a baby. I'm so brainy. What's happened? <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a clue. I can tell you that two of our threesome had nannies when they were growing up. Do the um, royal family do any childcare? You know, once they have a child, do they actually do anything? I think they'd probably, you know, pick it up, give it a bit of a jiggle. You'd have to think of a name. <laughs> think of a name, go on the balcony, jiggle, jiggle, name, name, yeah. hand it back. 
and then, then go to its graduation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can I make a guess that Prince Harry didn't have a nanny because Princess Diana took them to Thorpe Park? Oh, that's a good... That's yeah. true. <laughs> he, I don't she think that did. precludes the idea of a nanny, does it? No, yeah, it's... no, it, it's flimsy, but I just thought <laughs> maybe Princess Diana wouldn't let him have him. Because she was a down-to-earth... She's... Earl's daughter. <laughs> yeah. 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 What, one of the people, though, wasn't she? Yeah. She, she took him to she... Batlings for a fortnight as well, didn't she? <laughs> I think always wears the constant expression of a man who's sort of about to go under the water. Imagine working with him. How long would it be before you put a bit of shit in his pocket? <laughs> <laughs> Incidentally, Mickey, how long do you usually find it before you... <laughs> <laughs> what have we got here? <laughs> well, we need an answer. Oh, is that what you're choosing you as well? No, you can both choose the same yeah. thing. Oh, you think, think it's job. Nick Hewer? We think Nick Hewer as well. You think Nick Hewer? Well, the answer is Nick Hewer. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Nick went on to say, I told my parents and she didn't last long after that. So even back then he was used to hearing people say, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> Claire Balding is the only one uh, of those three who didn't have a nanny, but she thought of her mother's dog, Candy, as a sort of nanny. At the age of three, she thought she was a dog, apparently. She said, I would sleep in the dog's beds with them, drinking from the dog's water bowl. That's fine, isn't it? I tried eating a Bonio biscuit once. That was a bit dry. I didn't like it much. The dogs got a lot of attention and a lot of love, and their lives seemed to be very nice, and I just wanted to be one of them. <laughs> John, when, when you were a child, you didn't, you didn't want to be a dog. You, you wanted to be a broadcaster, didn't you? Well, yeah. When I was about ten, I think, I asked for a microphone as a birthday present. And I used to sit in the, in the kitchen with the microphone and the lead went through to the sitting room and I plugged into the wireless. Right. And my parents had to listen to me reading the Yorkshire Evening News. <laughs> I think that's a very sweet image. I think if, that if more children were sneaking into the next room and pretending to read the news, then I think there'd be, well, mm. I'll say it, less drug abuse. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I, I used to love the way every, on a, every episode of News Round, you always started by going, hello again. I did. Which yeah. I, I loved the way you said hello again. I also <laughs> said, and finally, and, and finally, long before Trevor MacDonald did on News at 10. He nicked and finally. <laughs> I think he did. <laughs> yeah, that but man's a fucking hack. I always knew. <laughs> so what did you say to the bastard? <laughs> Sir Trevor MacDonald. The bastard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, we never home. actually discussed it, to be honest. Well, you're a gentleman, unlike yeah. that thieving bastard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, John. Can we have the next quotation on childhood, please? Indeed. I can still recall, in slow motion, the way my sausage shot across the table towards the Queen as she sipped her tea. <laughs> so was it Claire Balding, Nick Hewer or Prince Harry? It's not Prince Harry, because there's no way that Prince Harry would say the Queen, because he knows her. They call her the Queen, though, in the royal family. Well, I've heard, yeah. oh, I've the heard queen Prince Charles down? refer to his mother, who is the Queen, as the Queen. What, he says... The Queen? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think he says the Queen, <laughs> like, when he's with her, you know, having a cup of tea. I don't say, hello, the Queen, could you pass the show? <laughs> it must be Prince Harry, because it has to be breakfast. The only time that one person will be having tea and another one will be having a sausage is breakfast time. And the only one who would be breakfasting with the Queen is Prince Harry. Otherwise, one of the other two has smuggled a sausage in while they've been invited for tea. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I, we're going to go for Claire Balding, actually, I think, because she seems the sort of person who would be invited to evening tea, and I think the Queen makes it up as she goes along. If she wants sausages, she's having sausages. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going to be Prince Harry. He's the only one who breakfasts with the Queen. Otherwise, you're suggesting, what occasion would the Queen be sipping tea and she's got a sausage out? Bonfire night. Bonfire night. They could be sort of... Sausage tea? Yeah. Jack and potatoes. Yeah. She's got Soup a flask tea. of tea. Yeah. And she might have, have hosted a celebrity bonfire night. Oh, the Queen's invited to celebrity bonfire night. Thank you. Yes. She's on Big Brother next time as well. Dear Fave and the Queen is... <laughs> <laughs> the Queen is crying in the dairy room. Yeah. I don't know why I came in here. <laughs> Things are going so well. So... Whose sausage shot across the table towards the Queen? Claire Balding. Richard and Josie? 
Claire Balding. Claire Balding. Everyone thinks it's Claire Balding. The answer is Claire Balding. Everyone's right. <laughs> so, John, can, can we have Claire's quotation in full, please? Indeed. The trouble with cutting a sausage long ways is that if you press too hard, it's a bit like squeezing a bar of soap. The sausage can shoot out of your grasp. I know this. I know this all too well. I can still record in slow motion the way my sausage shot across the table towards the Queen as she sipped her tea. The incident took place in Claire's family dining room when she was 12. Her father used to train racehorses for the mm -hmm. Queen. I must say, what possible justification is there for cutting a sausage long ways? If, if you're, you're making, making a sandwich. sandwich. Yes, yeah. if you're making a sandwich. Yeah. And if you're having dinner with the Queen and you're having sausages, do you think it is polite <laughs> in front of the Queen to... I'll tell you what, I'm not going to eat it with a knife before I'm going to make a sandwich. <laughs> and yet she clearly was making a sandwich. She, I mean, she must have been making yeah. a sandwich. She left that out of the anecdote. Yeah. <laughs> now, how did a 14-year-old Harry try to make his father's 50th birthday party less boring. He pretended the Queen had just been assassinated and went, You're king! Yeah. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and, then and then he went, No, no, she's still alive. And he went, Oh, <laughs> come on do now. Think, do you think it wouldn't be more complex than that on Prince Charles if he just told the Queen there wouldn't be a sort of grief mixed with excitement at the It would just be, Hooray! <laughs> the grief would come after. <laughs> it's not true, it's Sam. Not, no. Really. Any thoughts? He, uh, don't know. You don't know? Well, no, we don't know. he stripped naked and ran around in front of the guests. <laughs> <laughs> One party-goer recalled, Charles turned crimson. Ooh. I think crimson was a gay friend of his. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the end of our threesomes round, I can tell you that the teams are tied. Over the break, see if you can complete this quotation from American rapper and businessman 50 Cent. I can't believe my grandmother's making me take out the garbage. I'm what? Tweet your answer to at something I said. See you in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Welcome back to Was It Something I Said? Before the break, we asked you to complete this quotation from 50 Cent. I can't believe my grandmother's making me take out the garbage. I'm what? Any thoughts, panel? I actually do know this. You know it? Because I saw it retweeted, yes. Huh? It's, um, he says, I can't believe my grandmother's making me take out the garbage. I'm rich. I don't have to put up with this shit. I'm going home. <laughs> like, he's just round at his grandmother's. Yeah. Yeah. She's obviously can't yeah. move. <laughs> it's like, please, darling, will you take the rubbish out? And he's like, oh, forget this. I'm going home. <laughs> but the key word here is making. How... Violent is the grandmother. <laughs> we haven't met his grandmother. It could be a, yeah. it could be a chokehold she's using. <laughs> we don't know what's going on. Let's hear the full quotation. I can't believe my grandmother's making me take out the garbage. I'm rich. I'm going home. I don't need this. S dot dot dot. <laughs> um, I was really, I was really proud for a second, and then I was like. Oh, I remembered a tweet that 50 Cent said years ago. You never know when you're going to need no. these things, and it turns out it was exactly the right it, thing to remember. You remember it verbatim as well. John, I noticed that you didn't say the word uh, shit. Is that, is that a, a point of principle? I just choose not to swear on television, that's all. I remember you dropping the C-bomb on Newsround. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I was going to say that John says country file every week. <laughs> Seems quite a rare, fine way of putting it. <laughs> but yes, he was raised by his grandmother. What's he not allowed to do around her? Fifty cent rap. <laughs> <laughs> well, it might it might restrict his rapping. This rule. Oh, can he not swear like John Craven? Yeah, swear. exactly. He can't swear. Like John. Like, John, John, John Craven chooses not to swear. 50 Cent is prevented from swearing by it's... his all-powerful grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just the tone or the way she said it. I don't know. I don't know, Fiddy. But uh, <laughs> it's not one to kind of do that unless provoked. I think she must have used a very haughty tone. <laughs> 
Now, the next round is called Keywords. The teams must guess a full quote from hearing just two words from it. So much like having a chat in a nightclub, except without the blaring so-called music that people feel they have to pretend they like. <laughs> OK, here's a famous quotation from Muhammad Ali, said at a press conference in 1964 before his fight with Sonny Liston. And I'm looking for the entire quote. As your first clue, John, can we have two keywords, please? Sting and eyes. Is it like an extra bit of that quote everybody knows, floats like a sting like a bee? Is it just a, another bit of that? There's more to it than floats like a butterfly, sting like a bee, and it includes the word eyes. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, look around like eyes? <laughs> <laughs> Did he say it's just something like, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, I'm gonna, like... Hit him right between the eyes, like something really mm. just. I will detach his retina from his eyes. <laughs> That's, that could happen as well. Yeah, I could be. I'm going to give you another word, another clue word, please. Ugh, Josh. I hope it's not retina because yeah. I guess that. <laughs> <laughs> Hands. 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 It's a rhyming couplet. It's a rhyming couplet. Butterfly. Sing a butterfly float like a bee. Punch. Hang on, I'm playing charades with John Craven. This is exciting. <laughs> punch, punch, hit, hit, hit. Sing Definitely like a butterfly, words. float like a bee, hit like eyes uh, with my hands. Hi, as hands. C. His hands. Hands. C. C. Hit. 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 You're so, right. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Can we have the full quotation, please? Indeed. John? Floats like a butterfly, sting like a bee. His hands can't hit what his eyes can't see. Well yeah. done. Now, <laughs> um, Muhammad Ali, or Cassius Clay, as he was then, said uh, this quotation in 1964 before his fight with Sonny Liston. He also said, Sonny Liston is nothing. The man can't talk. The man can't fight. The man needs talking lessons, the man needs boxing lessons, and since he's going to fight me, he needs falling lessons. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> um, in 1960, he won the light heavyweight gold medal in the Olympics in Rome. Any idea what was unusual about his flight to Rome? It was delayed. <laughs> <laughs> he flew the plane. <sighs> no. Oh. There was no peanuts. <laughs> I don't know whether there were any peanuts. He was the only one on it. No. He wasn't on it. <laughs> no, he was on it. These are all good answers, then. <laughs> the answer is he wore a parachute. He was afraid of flying, and he bought one from an army surplus store. It displays a singular lack of concern for everyone else on that plane. <laughs> if you have got a parachute on, with the <clears> intention <throat> that you will jump clear of everyone else who's going down, that you just, can you open the door, please? I know that will preemptively suck a lot of the passengers out. <laughs> but I'm going to jump out. And you fucks, best of luck. <laughs> I'm Cassius Clay. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're absolutely right. It was, um... What a <laughs> terrible, terrible man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm ashamed to have mentioned him. <laughs> <laughs> Muhammad Ali once went to Iraq and successfully negotiated the release of 14 US hostages from Saddam Hussein. A strategy which didn't go quite so well when Tony Blair sent Frank Bruno to look for weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> OK, here's another one. This is from recently convicted Italian ex-Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi. It's a quotation from a wiretapped conversation heard in court in 2011. As your first clue, John, can we have two key words, please? Q and bedroom. <laughs> is it just by the... Is that the only... <laughs> it was a queue outside his bedroom. By the time you got to the front, I suppose you'd either have to nosh him off or pay your respects. <laughs> you'd have to, essentially, you'd have to take two sorts of outfit. A nice, <laughs> nice, sexy outfit, and then a respectful, but hopefully also sexy outfit. So did he have, like, a door going into his bedroom and then a door out the other side? That's what I'd have to have, I think. So they could leave in a different exit yeah. to the people coming in, cos the disappointment etched on their faces <laughs> in that. In any multiple sex situation, you've got to sort out the logistics, I find. <laughs> I'm going to give you another keyword. Can we have another keyword, please, John? Eleven. From, uh, I can give you a clue that this is from a wiretapped conversation about prostitutes. Is it like 
you know when you go in the supermarket and it says, cashier number 11, please? <laughs> <laughs> so it's like prostitute number 11. <laughs> <laughs> please okay. leave the queue yeah, into please, the yeah, bedroom. Good, yeah. So I'm going to ask you both to guess. You, you're in the right area, so starting with Richard <laughs> and Josie, guess what Sylvia Berlusconi said. I've just woken up. I really hope there isn't still a queue of 11 sex workers outside my bedroom. Um, Was it a bawdy Christmas sing-song, like, you know, 11 sex workers <laughs> queuing? <laughs> Five blowjobs! <laughs> I'm sure you could have got rings in there somewhere, David, to be honest. <laughs> well, we've got our Christmas single sorted. <laughs> So, uh, was that your guess? He probably said something like, people accuse of me of having a queue, where it's not a queue, it's only 11 prostitutes outside my bedroom, or something like that. 11 is in the queue. That's the theory, that 11 is in the queue. I'm going to ask John to give the full quotation, please. Right. Last night, I had a queue outside the door of the bedroom. There were 11. I only did eight because I could not do it anymore. <laughs> I think he was probably talking about autograph hunters, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Berlusconi said, when asked if they would like to have sex with me, 30% of women said <laughs> yes, while the other 70% replied, what, again? <laughs> <laughs> he is a prize arsehole, isn't he? He is a yeah, proper uh, arsehole. Yeah, I don't know who to give the points to, though. I was going to suggest that we had the points, yeah, if you're completely... Uh... Who do you got no idea who to give yeah. them to? No, just, I, just an idea. Give them the points. You, do you think... Well, there seems the to be a consensus right? there. Yeah, no, you have the points. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, Berlusconi had 11 prostitutes queuing outside his bedroom and could only have sex with eight of them. So he ordered three more than he needed. I know the feeling. I'm like that with poppadoms. <laughs> and at the end of our keywords round, a quick look at the scores tells me that Richard's team is in the lead. <laughs> Up next is a round called What Are They Talking About? You're going to hear a quote that's been taken out of context and you've got to work out what that person is talking about. It's sort of like trying to start watching Game of Thrones from the middle of an episode in season three. Except there will be no nudity. At least, no nudity above the desk line. Here's a quotation from artist Andy Warhol's diary in 1985. Can we hear it, please, John? I don't know what held me back from pushing her over the balcony. I guess I called her a bitch or something and asked how she could do it. So you're comfortable with the word bitch? <laughs> <laughs> I did consider that very deeply, uh, yeah. Richard. But, but a bitch is the definition of a female of the species, isn't it? Yeah. I don't think I'm a bitch, you know, so I don't count that as real swearing. Okay. <laughs> It'd probably have to be someone quite famous, because he was generally obsessed with famous people. Madonna? It, no, it wasn't Madonna. Grace Jones. No. Shall I keep naming 80s pop stars? I would love you to. Tapao, Gross, <laughs> Berlin, MC Hammer. He's not talking about anyone famous. OK. <laughs> well, it was his wife or his girlfriend or some, a lover. No. A lover of some kind. No, I'll give you a clue. It happened at a book signing. Uh, oh, it was okay. a book signing. They were in Borders, the one with the upstairs in Oxford Street. And, uh, I don't know, she spilled <laughs> the coffee over his book as he was reading it and he almost pushed her off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She just went in with a can of soup and went... <laughs> you see what I'm doing? <laughs> I'm taking it to a three-dimensional level. Uh, yeah. Is it a fan? A fan uh, of his, with a book of his? A book signing. To it's sign, yeah. Whether or not she was a fan is put in doubt by her subsequent actions. Did she throw paint all over him? No. Oh. Did she say, sort out your barnet? <laughs> You're warm. Something about, do you wear a wig? You're getting warm. She tried to pull his hair off. You got it. Oh. She snatched the wig off his head at the Rizzoli bookshop in Soho, where he was signing copies of his new book, America. Uh, Warhol described the event saying, My biggest nightmare came true. Keep your hair on. <laughs> <laughs> Andy Warhol described the wig snatch as worse than being shot. Neither has happened to me, but I'm going to disagree purely on the basis of how few hip-hop songs there have been about drive-by wig snatches. <laughs> So, at the end of that round, the scores are tied. <laughs> Over the break, see if you can complete this quotation from everyone's favourite psychoanalyst, Sigmund Freud, and something he said to a female patient in 1925. The great question that has never been answered is what? Tweet your answer to at something I said, 
See you in a couple of minutes. Welcome back to Was It Something I Said? Before the break, we asked you to complete this quotation from Sigmund Freud. The great question that has never been answered is what? Rhetorical. <laughs> <laughs> Freud said this in 1925 to a patient, Marie Bonaparte, who consulted Freud for treatment on what she described as her frigidity. <laughs> Did he claim that everyone wants to sleep with their mum at some point? I think he might. Or is that have. just me? <laughs> <laughs> He's, yes, he Depends said that he at. said that Mickey Flanagan uniquely wants to sleep with his mum. That was <laughs> only at certain points. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Every time I meet her, I think, oh, she'll do. <laughs> But then we have a sandwich and we move on. You know. <laughs> but you're allowed to think it. You're allowed to think most things. It's what the Buddhists say. Yeah. Uh, it's okay to think things. It's when you act out on those thoughts. That, that yeah, the absolutely. Start. So, I think Any I think I know. You think only you know? because I remember reading about this in connection to the was it the Mel Gibson film <laughs> called What Do Women Want? I, I think it's What Does a Woman Want. Oh, well, you... what they're thinking. What do women... What, what are do they I... thinking? What do women want? What are women? <laughs> <laughs> John, can we have the full quotation, please? The great question uh, that has never been answered is, what does a woman want? And, yes, Mickey got it absolutely right. <laughs> Richard, very close, but... <laughs> now, I'm going to ask a, a bit of an honesty test here. Yeah. Mickey, did you come up with your answer because Richard had said, what do women want, or did you know no. it was going to be something like that separately? No, because I, I did philosophy and uh, psychology in my first year at university, and we did Freud for a little while, so, you, so I knew what you, you knew said. As well. In which case, you get the point, we knew Richard was and Richard doesn't off. get the point. Uh, the full quote is, the great question that has never been answered, and which I have not yet been able to answer, despite my 30 years of research into the feminine soul, is what does a woman want? This quote is from Sigmund Freud, Life and Work, uh, 1955, penis. Sorry, a hard, hard on, hard back book by Ernest Wank. <laughs> Jones, Jones, Jones. <laughs> Our next round is the Was It Something I Said round, in which each team has to work out who said the following quotations. It'll either be from one of our guests on the show tonight or from our virtual guest, Lance Armstrong. So be warned, a quote of yours could be judged the kind of thing that could only be said by one of the biggest lying cheats of all time. <laughs> and even worse, an American. <laughs> so first up is Mickey's team. Who said the following? Was it Richard, Josie, John, me or Lance Armstrong? Sometimes, on a whim, I'll buy something at random, like Motorhomes Weekly. I like the nerdy details. Well, it could be any of you with that. <laughs> I can't, see it. I, don't, is, I can't uh, see it being David. Well, he just wouldn't waste his time on details like that. I uh, can't see Josie in a million years going I can to buy a motorhome's week. <laughs> That's a really tough one. I don't know Lance Armstrong as well as the others. Lance. Oh, he's a liar, so it could be a quote from him, but he's lying. That makes, yeah. it, that makes it a lot tougher, that. <clears throat> yeah. Obviously, Lance Armstrong's lies are quite specific. If one of the quotes was, I've never taken performance-enhancing drugs <laughs> to help with my cycling career... Why don't, you we, why don't we go for Lance? Go for Lance, yeah, why not? Let's bring him in. Yeah, bring him Have in he, for the is game. He, is he, like, on a...? No, he's not here. Oh. He said he was going to be. Did he? <laughs> <laughs> You're so trustworthy, I just sort of believed you. <laughs> <laughs> We're saying Lance Armstrong. Well, the answer is not Lance Armstrong. Yeah, it's Lance. John Craven. I am quite interested in motorhomes, and I do occasionally at railway stations buy strange kind of enthusiast magazines as well. What, like at the Angling Times? Angling Times, maybe, yeah. yeah. Or <laughs> rival countryside publications and things. Oh, right. Rival, 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 yeah. <laughs> I did go to the motorhomes exhibition last year. Shut the door. Yeah. <laughs> this is... This is not sounding random at all. What, what you're saying is sometimes I like to buy something specifically about my motorhome obsession. <laughs> um, can we have the uh, next quotation, please? A boo is a lot louder than a cheer. If you have ten people cheering and one person booing, all you hear is the booing. So, who said that? Was it Richard, Josie, John, me or Lance Armstrong? Mm. That's the sort of thing a stand-up would say, isn't it? Lance Armstrong, though. 
He's got a tight set. <laughs> Tight a lot of stuff it. about cycling, though. <laughs> Bit of a one-note stand-up last... I, I was in the saddle, and uh, funny story. <laughs> anyway, I was re-injecting my own blood. <laughs> and, uh, Lance Armstrong, he divided people booing definitely. Richard, is that recorded in front of a live... What the IT crowd was, wasn't it? It was. Yes, yeah, so yeah. you'd have had booze, yeah. David? Uh, why would they boo him on the IT crowd? <laughs> they saw me act. <laughs> <laughs> Just as he came out, boo! Oh, Mean something! He was bad. All right, let's see if he recalls this. Boo! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Stop oh, it, that's so much like louder that. than ten people cheering. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see anyone booing John, you know. On country no, no. far, I don't think as you go, and over here we have a cow, and everyone goes, boo! <laughs> moo! Moo! <laughs> right, I need an answer. We're going to go for Richard. Well, the answer is Lance Armstrong. Yeah. <laughs> so next up, it's Richard's team. Who said the following? Was it Mickey, Rod, John, me, or Lance Armstrong? I've got 4,000 or 5,000 songs on my iPod. That's just showing off, really. <laughs> well, that can't be you. No. Because you <laughs> have, like, have... Brahms and then podcasts about the Second World War. <laughs> <laughs> Underscored with, <laughs> with, with, with Tapau. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is. Do you know what I think? You think it's crazy? I think, it, yeah. Does it help that I haven't got an iPod? Oh, you're out of the game. That... <laughs> you know what, John? That helps a great deal. <laughs> it helps so much that we can now eliminate you. <laughs> <laughs> I think okay, what's it could your be answer? Mickey because, like, I can I've imagine got... him sort of saying, as like a fun dad, like, I've got 4,000 or 5,000 films <laughs> on my iPod. I've got... Because... <laughs> I've got 4,000 or 5,000. <laughs> How many Chaz and Dave songs are there? <laughs> it's more than one and fewer than 4,000. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to make you for plump sure. for one. They've been going a long time. They've plump. Been... OK. I a bit think... harsh, bit harsh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't a bit. It wasn't a. It wasn't a bit. You're very slender. I was using. I was using the imperative verb, meaning to choose. I Decide. Think... Okay. I think it could be Lance. Yeah, I do too. I really do. Um, your answer is Lance Armstrong. Mm -hmm. I, your answer is correct. <laughs> Can we have the next quote, please, John? To be honest, shaving was perfectly fine. It was the waxing that's a hundred times worse. So, who said that? Was it Mickey, Rod, John, me, or Lance Armstrong? Well, it'd be fun if it was you. It'd be most fun <laughs> if it was you. It wouldn't be most fun, because I would have to have shaved and waxed my scrotum. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even thinking... I was thinking back or chest. No, I mean, that's going to be scrotum. <laughs> <laughs> back, sack and crack. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it won't help with my cycling. <laughs> <laughs> but I would have thought that'd be the one area you wouldn't have to shave. If, I mean, you don't cycle naked. <laughs> Depends how fast you want to go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I would have thought something flapping around would increase wind resistance. You just, you just gaffer it to the saddle. <laughs> But what about when you need to stand up during those outfits? <laughs> I haven't thought this through. <laughs> I... Well, who's more hairy out of... <laughs> I think Rod's more hairy. I'm not more hairy than Mickey Flanagan. How does that work? You've got a little bit of hair poking out the I've top of your shirt. I've got a little bit, but look at that. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you reckon? It's, okay. it's either Craven or Armstrong. I'd love it to be Craven, but I don't... I can't... No, he's just said no. So, <laughs> it's great. It's the gift that keeps giving. <laughs> I, th I think it's, it's Armstrong. Armstrong. Lance Armstrong. It, your answer is Armstrong? Yeah. Well, the true answer is oh! Rod Gilbert. Rod, what's the story there? And the story there was uh, I was doing a... I do a programme called Work Experience, uh, where I try different jobs, and I was trying to be a drag artist, and uh, as part of that was... Uh, Shaved and waxed from head to foot. <laughs> Don't recommend it. It takes about an hour to do a, a, an adult male hairy person. About an right. hour of <laughs> constant <laughs> agony. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for. And a quick look at the scores tells me that it is a draw.
thank you to Mickey and Rod and to Richard and Josie and to our guest narrator, John Craven. And we leave you with this quotation from American novelist James A. Baldwin. When one begins to live by habit and by quotation, one has begun to stop living. Oh, thanks a lot, James. Don't I feel a dick? <laughs> Good night. That's back Sunday at 10. But coming up, don't bite me, 8 out of 10 cats.